Okay, hello and welcome to today's video. So, Breath of the Wild 2 hype is still building, so to shamelessly ride on the excitement wave, I've decided to bring you guys a speculation video. We're going to cover a few different theories about what the green energy seen in the trailer could be, and how it's going to impact the game. And annoying Bokoblin accidentally made the mistake of letting me onto its channel, so this video is probably only going to go downhill from here on out, so I'm sorry about that. But also, we want to remind you that this is all just speculation, okay? We don't know anything extra that you don't. Take everything in this video with a grain of salt. We're just getting hyped for the game in the same way that you guys are. And with all that out of the way, let's do this. So this is probably the most commonly mentioned idea on the internet so far, that the green energy will give Link the ability to shapeshift his right arm into different forms, similar to concept art for Breath of the Wild. Now in this art, Link is using external Sheikah technology to morph his arm. We feel like Nintendo may have adapted this early idea into Link using a power from within his body to do this to his arm instead. As an extension, we think it's possible that there could be multiple sealed evils throughout Hyrule, with each seal granting Link a new arm form. Say for example that each dungeon you have to go through has a body held in it by the same green energy that we've seen in the trailer. When you come across it, Link uses the energy to receive a new arm form that he can use. However, this would also release the sealed evil into the world and could lead to something like a mini boss, a main boss, or, or possibly even leading up to something larger later in the story. This idea would allow for the designers to effectively give us dungeon items as we've had in previous Zelda games, but were totally absent in Breath of the Wild. I mentioned mini-bosses earlier, and there is a possible issue that could come up, which I would like to quickly explain. I, 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 Eji Aonuma said that they want to keep future Zelda games open world, with no set order. Wouldn't it be possible that some item unlock orders would leave Link overpowered in combat? Well, considering Link would have only just gained a new form for his right arm, they could force Link to only use his sword and shield under the guise that it takes time for his right arm to become usable again due to an adjustment period. This next idea requires a quick recap of some lore which is barely touched upon during the original game. In Breath of the Wild there's a reference to an ancient warlike tribe based in Faron, a region in southeast of Hyrule. They're described as being the creators of the Barbarian armor, and that's about it for what the game itself tells us. However, if we look at the Masterworks book, we're given a little more information. There's mention of an ancient tribe called the Zonai, which also happen to be based in the Fallon Rainforest. They're described through the rumors of savages proficient in ancient magic, and if we go back to the game, we can find but one mention of the same tribe, the Zonai Ruins in the Fallon region. It's quite clear that this Zono tribe is the one referenced to in the Barbarian Armour's description. So, on with our idea. The underground area we've seen was built by this tribe as well. The architecture matches all of the other Zonai structures we've seen, from the palace in Faron to the Dark Typhlo ruins. Considering we've only seen this green energy acting like this within a Zonai construction, it seems within reason to say that it might be directly linked to the Zonai tribe. A tribe which was known for their proficiency in magic. They could also have been the original creators of the green energy, serving as a way to pass their ancient magic down onto Link, allowing him to cast magical spells. Magic's often been touched upon in Zelda games, but we've never thoroughly explored it. This doesn't seem to contradict anything we've learned about the tribe, and it would also open up some very interesting ideas as spells could be used for both puzzles and combat, like in Ocarina of Time. Mr. Bokoblin just mentioned that we've only seen the energy behave the way it is within the trailer, and that it just happens to be within a Zonai ruin. But it's also possible that we have seen this energy before, only in a slightly different form. When the champions appear after defeating their respective Ganon Blight, and when the old man at the beginning reveals himself to be King Ro Ki <coughs> King Ki King Crispy Cri Ki Ki K Rule King Rome Boss for Amos Amos Hyrule. Oh, okay. Um. We've seen a strikingly familiar colour surrounding the characters. These are both tied to instances where the characters involved aren't physically alive anymore. This same colour can be seen when the Shrine Monks don't feel so good, directly after giving you a Spirit Orb. It seems very likely that these guys are present only in spirit here, and the green energy is either linked to people's spirits or is a manifestation of the spirit itself. So what could spirit energy do? Well. 
maybe it could function the same way as Spirit Orbs did in Breath of the Wild, granting Link more heart containers and expanding his stamina wheel. Though, there's also a possibility we could see a totally new function tied closer to spiritual growth. In the first game, Link needs to have a certain number of hearts before he's able to pull the Master Sword from its pedestal. We might see something like this happen again, like maybe we need our spirit to be a certain strength before we can open an important room or fight a boss. Remember though, we did see the floor collapse in the trailer, so maybe Link could lose the Master Sword again and we need a certain amount of spirit energy before we can find it or pull it out of its pedestal again. Many people have drawn connections between the green energy and courage, malice and power, and the Sheikah goop and wisdom. These three representations of the Triforce seem to line up pretty well, so if this green energy does indeed represent courage, where exactly could it be coming from? The first possibility is that it could come from some divine source. One might think of the goddess of courage herself, Faror, but the goddesses haven't been seen to interact with Hyrule since its flooding before Wind Waker. A more likely divine source of this energy could be the Triforce itself. We know that Artifact acts to keep the balance between power, wisdom and courage, so perhaps it created this energy of sorts to restore the balance between the three powers. Another possible non-divine source is the dragon Ferrosh. We know from Masterworks that the Zonai worshipped a water dragon. They were based in the Faron region, which just happens to be where we find the only dragon in Hyrule seen to go in and out of the water, Farosh. Farosh could have provided the green energy to a Zonai, as they've devoted their lives to worshipping him. This also fits everything we've seen in the trailer, the energies within a Zonai structure, and the colour just so happens to match the colour of Farosh, green. So how could a courage representing energy be used, well, aside from shapeshifting? Well, when you think of The Legend of Zelda, one of the first things that you imagine has to be Link with his iconic Master Sword. The blade makes an appearance in Breath of the Wild, however it's in a weakened state, where it has to recharge its energy. But, we've also seen that it can be tempered, as shown in the Trials of the Sword, or in A Link to the Past with the Blacksmiths even. So, maybe the green energy will be used to further power up the sword, increasing its durability further maybe, or returning its power to banish Ganondorf once and for all. So, those are our thoughts on how the green energy could be used in Breath of the Wild 2. We've covered a few different ideas, so hopefully you've heard something interesting today. I personally think that the second idea, with the Zonai Origins, would be my favourite, as the idea of spells could be really interesting and I want to learn more about the Zonai. Well, I think that would be cool, but I think the idea of there being a bunch of sealed evils would be more interesting. Bringing back classic dungeon items would be great, because like I said, they weren't in Breath of the Wild, and it kind of felt like the game was missing something slightly? I don't know. Um, let us know in the comments which idea you think would be the coolest to see. Or if you have any of your own ideas, please let us know, because we would love to read them, right? Zelda. It's a good series. We're excited. Come on. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to both mine and Infin's channels. Infin does, uh, how exactly would you describe it? I, uh, sometimes make funny Nintendo videos. Squid oh yeah! <laughs> um, I've got some Zelda stuff coming, so if you're interested in that, please make sure to check it out. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day.